Dear students, we will learn about DNA profiling of plants in this practical lecture. Let us start with the introduction. Molecular marker techniques have several advantages over morphological or biochemical marker techniques and are not affected by factors like environment and developmental stage of the plants. Unlike the morphological or biochemical markers, DNA based molecular markers are commonly used to study the evolutionary history of species as well as for other studies like intraspecific variation, population genetics, genetic characterizations of different plant groups or cultivars and genetic resource conservation etc. DNA markers used for profiling may be either non-PCR or hybridization based markers or polymerase chain reaction or PCR based markers. An example of non-PCR or hybridization based markers is restriction fragment length polymorphism or RFLP in short and examples of polymerase chain reaction or PCR based markers include random amplified polymorphic DNA or rapid in short inter simple sequence repeat or ISSR markers amplified fragment length polymorphism or AFLP etc. DNA based restriction fragment length polymorphism or RFLP technique was a prominent DNA profiling technique developed in the 1970s. Since the RFLP method involved isolation of genomic DNA, cutting the extracted DNA with restriction enzymes, transferring the fragments with sudden blotting to a filter paper and hybridizing the filter bound fragments with local specific probes and detection of the fragments with autoradiography. It was time consuming and also needed the development of species specific hybridization probes. Therefore, it was soon replaced by PCR based approaches like rapid using small about 10 nucleotide length non-specific primers with arbitrary sequences to generate PCR fragments from genomic DNA which produced multi locus banding patterns after electrophoresis. The genetic relationships between species can be determined by comparing the fingerprint obtained for a species with those of the other species. The application of RAPD or RAPID also does not require prior knowledge of the DNA sequence for the targeted gene. DNA profiling of plant samples by random amplified polymorphic DNA or rapid technique involves the isolation of genomic DNA from the sample tissues as the first step. Although different parts of the plant like flower petals, seeds, pollen grains, roots, rhizomes, tubers and even dried wood can be used as materials for DNA isolation. Fresh leaves are commonly considered as the standard materials for plant DNA isolation. Samples should be processed immediately for DNA isolation to prevent degradation of DNA and if they cannot be processed immediately then are commonly preserved by storing at minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 80 degrees Celsius or by quick drying in silica gel. The next step is the PCR amplification of the isolated DNA using random oligonucleotide primers. The PCR amplification products are then electrophoresed in agarose gels and the veins obtained are observed and scored for analyzing the similarity among the samples. In agarose gel electrophoresis, the size of the amplified fragments can be determined by comparing the sizes with non-molecular markers. 
Next, let us see the materials required for the experimentation. First, the glassware is required. It includes measuring cylinders and beakers. Next are the reagents. First is the ethidium bromide in 10 mg per ml concentration. Next is the CTEP buffer which contains 2% CTEP, 5 molar sodium chloride, 1 molar tris ICL at pH 8, 0 0.5 molar EDTA at pH 8. Next is the TE buffer. 400 ml of TE buffer. We require 10 millimolar trees at pH 8. This can be made by using 1 ml of 1 molar stock solution. Next is 1 millimolar EDTA, which can be made by using 50 microliter of 0.5 molar stock. Next are the other required reagents. It includes 70% ethanol, which is commonly stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius, absolute isopropanol, which is also commonly stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Then next is TBE buffer. For making 2 liters of 10x TBE buffer, we require 218 gram of trees base, 110 gram of boric acid, 9.3 gram of EDTA. The ingredients are dissolved in 1.9 liter of distilled water and pH is adjusted to about 8.3 using sodium hydroxide and the volume is met up to 2 liter. Next, let us see the other requirements. The other requirements include thermocycler, electrophoresis apparatus, UV trans illuminator, vortex mixture, micro pipettes, tips, adhesive tape, microwave or hot plate burner, crushed ice, gloves, etc. Next are the plant samples. Young leaves of Allium odorum and Allium hookeri will be used as plant samples for the experimentation. Let us now see the methodology of plant DNA profiling. We will start with DNA isolation. For this, 100 mg of plant tissue is grinded in 1 ml of pre-warm CTEP extraction buffer containing 1% PVP and 2% beta mercaptoethanol and incubated at 65 degrees Celsius for 1 hour with occasional mixing. The samples are cooled to room temperature and 1 ml of chloroform is added. The samples are properly mixed and incubated at room temperature for 30 minutes. Next, the mixture is centrifuged at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Afterwards, the supernatant is then mixed with 1 ml of chloroform, isoamyl alcohol and incubated for 30 minutes. The sample is Centrifuge for 5 minutes at 10,000 rpm and 4 degrees Celsius. The supernatant is collected and mixed with 1 ml of ice cold isopropanol and incubated at minus 20 degrees Celsius overnight. The samples are centrifuge at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius and the supernatant is discarded. The pellet is dried and washed with 70% ethanol and centrifuge for 10 minutes at 10,000 rpm and 4 degrees Celsius after washing to collect the pellet. The pellet is dried in vacuum and resuspended in 1 ml of 1x TE buffer and stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius for further uses. 
The next step is the checking the quality of DNA by agarose gel electrophoresis. For this, first mix 0.5 gram of regular agarose powder in 50 ml of 1x TBE buffer and microwave for about 1 minute to dissolve the agarose. Leave it on the bench for about 5 minutes to let the solution cool down to about 60 degrees Celsius, which is like just hot enough to be able to hold with bare hands. Now add 1 microliter of 10 mg per liter ethidium bromide solution to the gel mixture and swirl to mix the contents. Now pour the gel into the gel tray and put the combs of the required sample size. The gel is allowed to solidify in room temperature for at least 30 minutes. Remove the tray from the support and immerse it in the tank containing 1x TBE buffer. Now mix 10 microliter of DNA with 10 microliter of loading buffer and load it into the well. Mix 5 microliter of loading buffer with 2 microliter of leather and load it in another well. Now run the gel at 100 volt for 20 minutes or until the dye line is approximately 75 to 80% of the way down the gel. Now place the gel on the tray of a trans illuminator and photograph the picture. Next is the PCR protocol for RAPD or RAPID. The RAPD PCR amplification was performed in a total volume of 25 microliter consisting of the final concentration containing 1x of reaction buffer including the concentration of 50 nanogram genomic DNA, 4 millimolar magnesium chloride, 2 units of tech DNA polymerase, 0.4 millimolar of DNTP mixture and 10 picomolar of primer. In this case, we are using the primer IDT8 with sequence AAT, ZCC, ZCAG and the volume was met up with molecular grade water. A master mix was prepared and PCR mixture was positioned in the wells of PCR. Amplification was performed in an automated cycler or master cycler. Initial denaturation was carried out at 94 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes, followed by 45 cycles of 1 minute at 94 degrees Celsius, 1 minute at 36 degrees Celsius and 2 minute at 72 degrees Celsius. The final extension step was 10 minutes at 72 degrees Celsius and a 4 degrees Celsius whole temperature at the end. Next is the detection method. Rapid or RAPD fragments were separated according to their size in a 1.2% agarose gel run in 1x TBE buffer. A 100 base pair leather was also loaded on the gel as size standard. The gel was run on different time and voltage setting depending upon the size of the electrophoresis apparatus used. The gel was stained with ethidium bromide and visualized under UV light. The gel image was then captured using a gel documentation system. Now let us see the results. The bands corresponding to the isolated DNA samples and the leather are observed in the picture. The purity and quality of the isolated DNA sample is checked by observing the bands. 
Since the primers get clear and polymorphic profiles, it can distinguish between the two species. Thank you.